Tim, my man, how are you, sir? I'm good. How are you? Well, I'm I'm good. I've I want to come on to your show. You've invited me a a few times, but I don't know. Getting there and the bag over my head and being thrown into the back of the van. It's yeah, a, we're up in the top of the mountain, so yeah. you know, got to keep it a secret, right? <laughs> yeah. How are you? Uh, pretty good. Pretty good. I mean, things are things are going great out here. We're we're expanding quite a bit. We got a new studio that's that's popping up. Very excited for that. Yeah. Other than that, just doing the show, talking about the news, and then uh, I guess to a certain degree, giving my money away to people who need it more than I do. Good for you. Good for you. What you're doing with uh, Daniel Perry is so, or Daniel Penny is so. Penny Perry was the other guy. Yeah. Uh, uh, Penny is what you're doing is so important. This guy, I can't believe we live in a uh, in America today that is going after this guy. Well, I was on the I was on the other side of it uh, to a certain degree when the story first comes out because I I've I've been re- just really frustrated with what I view as not enough people standing up for our moral values or a moral framework, you know. And so with uh, say Kyle Rittenhouse, for instance, I'm 100. We got we got to save this guy. With Daniel Penny, I, I I first said, you know what? Obviously, this guy should not be going to prison. He did the right thing. He was defending others. But if you choose to live in these cities and you are not pushing back against this, uh, the changes, if you're voting for these people, I have no sympathy. And so that was what I was saying the week prior. And then I had a few conversations. Some people made some good arguments to me. And I realized, you know what, there is a very, very good reason to actually be in this fight to make sure Penny does not go to prison. The first is, you know, I felt kind of bad to see everybody rallying to save this guy from prison. Here I am being this kind of dick, like, I ah, screw you. you, you made your own bed. But I thought about two things. One, someone said to me, it's not so easy just to leave a city when, you know, what, Tim, when you say, get out of the cities because they're, they're getting bad and the, the, the Democrat policies are soft on crime, it's getting worse. You gotta understand some people can't just up and leave. And my response was always, well, it may be very, very hard and it may be the hardest thing you've ever done, but you certainly can move out of these cities. And then someone made a really good point. They said, my, my wife left me through no choice of my own and my kids are here and I will not leave them behind. And I'm like, okay, that's, a, that's actually a good point. Some, there, there really are circumstances where people, they, they wanna stay there, they wanna push back. They don't want the cities to fall into this, this chaotic garbage. And, you know, I, I was a bit short-sighted on that, and I can respect that. But then the better argument was, if Daniel Penny loses this fight, then the self-defense, uh, yep. then self-defense in this country erodes, and it's only a matter of time before it comes to your suburbs and then to your more rural areas. And that was the most compelling thing to me. I was like, well, look, I've always agreed this guy is a hero who's done the right thing. But actually, that's a really good point. Let's, so, so when I went and, you know, I wake up one day and I'm looking at the fundraiser, I said, Basically, because I was such a dick. Last okay, week, we're on a we're on the FCC I, airways. I just want you to be careful. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> uh, I, I should probably uh, lead out on this one. And so uh, then I uh, decided to, you know, I looked at what the current numbers were and I said, I can afford to do better. I, so I, I put up $20,000 for, for Daniel Penny, kind of in a, uh, I should have donated in the, in the first place. I was wrong to say you're on your own. And I do want this guy to win. I do want self-defense to win. And so uh, I, I, I put up the 20 grand and I, and I said, I know there's a lot of people who can probably give more than me and I challenge them to do so. And there's another reason on top of it, let's, let's send a message that the protests which triggered this man's arrest are meaningless. Mm-hmm. Cause you have, in, you have in New York City, these protesters come out, they're violent, they get arrested and they use that to garner sympathy. And yet this, our reporter who was simply standing there filming was physically attacked by these protesters. And I said, I want to send a message that these protests don't work. And so that means we have to counter those protests with something more powerful. And that's winning the legal battle here for Daniel Penny. Well, I, um, uh, I, I just, I look at this story and I think to myself, what you said about it come to your town next you this is going against all of human nature and this is what progressives do in the end it's always going against human nature it is saying that you don't have a right to defend yourself or protect others and for a guy to stand up i mean think of this who was his name uh todd beamer wasn't he the guy the let's roll guy 
all he did was exactly what Todd Beamer did after 9-11 or during, on 9-11, where he was sitting in the plane, the hijackers take over, and he's like, let's go, come on, it's us or them. And they took him down, and we celebrated. We celebrated that guy. Here's another guy. I don't think he wished him ill. He just wanted to stop him from doing any damage or hassling people, and, uh, and we don't have a right to do that if he loses you're exactly right. We have to sit there and take it. There's also, um, I believe, I, I can't remember how long, long ago it was in New York. Another man was being violent on the subway and, and getting people's faces. And a man put him in a chokehold and subdued him. And he got interviewed on television as a hero. So, so something changed or has been changing over the past several years. And I think while I can certainly point the finger at these far left extremists and, and these Soros DAs and these policies, I think the bigger problem is not that evil exists, but it's that good men do nothing. Mm -hmm. And so in a place like New York City, I wonder why it is the people of New York City, knowing that crime is, is getting out of hand, why aren't people protesting for Penny? That, that was initially what got me on sort of the negative side of this. Like, look, the people of New York City come out and protest to have this man arrested. This is what they want. If the people of New York City wanted something different, they would be standing up for Daniel Penny, but they don't do it. Now, all that aside, my ultimate conclusion is we, 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 need, to, we need to be that support then. We need to help this man win this legal case, lest it come our way. Always be standing up for people who are doing the right thing, lest one day it is you on the firing line and right. no one speaking up for you. Well, here's... But I do think it's... Uh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I think it's interesting that where, where is the shared conviction and moral framework of the American population? We can see it with this movement to provide resources to Penny for his legal defense, but we don't see it on the ground the way the left does. So not only are the left fundraising like crazy when it comes to political issues, they're out there getting physically violent and organizing massive protests and voter initiatives and that, that seems to be the stronger organizational power. We've got to counter that. We've got to wake people up. We've got to tell people that the only thing required for evil to triumph is that good people do nothing. And we need those good people to stand up. So I think the, the problem is not that w people are unwilling to stand up. They're unwilling to stand up under these conditions because I think the January 6th scared people enough that if they go stand up, there might be an FBI informant there that's going to start something. Uh, they, if, if the left comes in, starts a fight, they're going to be ones that they're called the terrorists. I think people are much more comfortable being at home. They feel safer being at home giving uh, than they do marching. And that is a problem, but I don't see a yeah. Martin Luther King that is leading that. You know, freedom, freedom isn't free. And if this is how we as the American people choose to progress, that is to say, the average person says, you know what, it's easier for me to stay home and keep my head down than, than the next generation, the generation after that, things will just keep getting worse. The, the, I, I think back to the, the greatest generation. I think back to the men and women who fought in the American Revolution. These are people who said, if I don't do it, who will? And if I don't do it, what am I leaving for my children? But now it seems very much so that that mentality certainly exists among these leftists who, who believe crazy things. But the average American, the regular person says, just leave me alone. And this allows the more extreme elements of the left to run rampant, capture institutions. And to be honest, I, I, I am fairly optimistic, though. I think uh, freedom, personal responsibility, meritocracy, I think all that's going to win. I think this is just a great challenge before us in our in our current decade or generation. But I'm 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 pretty sure we got this one. I do. I, I, I don't I don't see the chaos of the left functioning properly. There's a fire that is raging, but I think I think it'll I think we will stop it. I do. I have a sneaking suspicion that that is true. I wasn't there a year ago, um, but I am there now. I mean, it's going to be a race to the finish. Um and I'm not mm -hmm. sure for, you know, I, I, I wouldn't want to bet my house on who's going to cross that finish line first. But uh, they are so out in the open now. And the things that they are pushing are so crazy. 
that I just don't think that Amer- <clears throat> Americans will continue to take it. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I, I, I agree. No, I, I do think so. Um, I think what we're seeing with Penny, I think this is a sign of people saying, OK, OK, maybe I do need to be active because it will come to your house. And, I, you know, I talked about this several years ago. I said when the mob is outside protesting and screaming, the police will have a decision. They'll say, do we arrest the man in his home, one man, or do we try to arrest 200 violent rioters? And they're going to say, look, it's easier to keep the peace by arresting the one man. And you know what? We saw that happen in Milwaukee a couple of years ago. A large group of Black Lives Matter protesters had set, or I should say rioters at this point, set fire to a house twice because they were demanding that these two young girls be released who weren't even there. It was just mob mentality. This same group, mostly the same group, same organizers, showed up to a man's house and began a similar protest. When he brandished his shotgun from inside his own home as a warning to these people, like who had previously burned down a house, I'm not saying it was the right thing to do, but when he did, the police came to the cheers of Black Lives Matter and arrested the man in his own home and carried him away, and they celebrated it. And it was interesting because we said, I thought Black Lives Matter wanted to defund the police. No, no, no. They want to remove any police who are willing to support American values, self-defense. They arrested a guy in his own house. And I warned people, if you don't stand up, if you're not active, the cops will simply say, look, you don't ever protest. There is no political pressure from you. The violence and the fear that we feel is coming from the far left. So we're going to do what they want. We got we got we got we got we to send a message. We're stopping that. We're saying, no, 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 no. We're going to stand up against this. And we're going to put pressure in the right way, which is through the legal process, Yes. to put an end to the violence and the chaos. Good for you, Tim. Tim, thank you so much. Great to talk to you. And uh, keep up the good Thanks work. Thanks for having me. You bet. Tim Poole, Tim Poole, host of uh, Tim Cast at TimCast.com or YouTube. 